Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to Friday morning. It's nine o'clock in the morning and we are getting ready to get the show on the road right now. Show you guys outside real quick. Got the Jeep loaded up, had to park that thing perpendicular to the curb to get all of our equipment loaded up. And you're probably wondering what y'all loading up for, who y'all running from, nothing like that at all. And in fact, what we're getting ready to do is run toward someone and something. Got Joel with me and we're getting ready to take our first road trip together, Joel and I are. You know, when I think about where we've traveled to with After Prison Show in an effort to go bring you guys a story, we haven't done it all that much in the past, but nonetheless, we're getting ready to do that today and we're getting ready to go meet with a guy by the name of Lenny. Lenny's a guy up in Baltimore, Maryland who has served 43 years straight in prison. Got locked up originally on March 21st, 1979. He's been home now for 19 months and I think it's only been two weeks that Lenny has been living in his own apartment. This is a guy who got locked up who could not read nor write when he got locked up and while locked up a cellmate taught him how to do both he wrote two books working on a third and this dude has a hell of a story lenny originally got locked up for armed robbery while locked up he had a drug problem ran up a drug debt ended up stabbing and killing a drug dealer and ended up getting an extra 30 years because of that situation but nonetheless i don't want to give you guys too much of this man we're gonna go meet with him. He's been brought to us by another awesome person by the name of Kali. Kali's this white dude up in Baltimore who's been struggling with an addiction. He's been stabbed a bunch of times, never even been to prison. How Kali and Lenny met, pretty interesting story. They were in a sober living house together which is actually owned and ran by Lenny's brother. We're only going up there for 24 hours and it's our hope to be able to film five videos. It's gonna be a hell of a lot of work. We're supposed to be on the road at nine o'clock. Joel, what time is it? 9.05. It's time to ride. All right, folks, super interesting and exciting times. Looking forward to bringing all of you along for this. So let's get the show on the road. We're on our way to Baghdad, Baltimore, a pretty rough area. So let's go. I might as well start filming. We are almost there and just want to show you guys a little bit around. So a couple of things real quick that I want to tell you guys. Yeah, definitely some, man, just interesting looking locations. Very, very cool looking locations. There was a freaking police helicopter that was flying that way toward the city. And I was like, man, this thing reminds me of Grand Theft Auto right here. And then we just passed by an overpass where it was spray painted. It didn't say Be More or Baltimore. It said Body More. So, we up in it. So we're getting ready to pull up to the halfway house. And this is where we're going to be meeting with Kali at. We're going to spend some time with him. We might get a chance to meet Jerome. And then from here, we'll be going and meeting with Lenny. Are we on the right one? What does it say? Yeah, it's got to be that one right there. My name is Jerome. I am the CEO for the House of Change Behavior Health Center. Um, one of the things that I do here at these houses, I um, kind of, ain't going to say kind of, I um, provide shelter and homing for people who are uh, Recovering off of substance abuse. This is located at Baltimore, Maryland. How long have you been working with the recovery houses? Well, I've been working with the recovery houses since 2008. I opened my first house up in 2008. And share with us a little bit of your backstory. You're also in recovery. Yes, well, well, well this house here, um, where we located at right now is the neighborhood that I grew up in. 
So I am also um, in recovery as well. I got clean August the 23rd, 1993, coming up on 28 years. You had said something to me outside um, about being like one bad decision away. Like recovery is something that you take very seriously. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, like I was discussing outside that even though I'm placed in the position to oversee this, because I own it as well, um, I try to stay as humble and let the, um, I don't like using the word clients because um, I look at them more as a resident. That um, me in this process as well, along with them guys, and, and the females that we do have female houses as well, that um, I have to stay grounded and connected because I am a bad decision to way if I, if I don't be careful. How many houses do you have? Right now I have um, 10 houses and I have a clinical building and I have a van service as well that, that we do all our transportation in. What was the reason for you to get involved in this? Well, after, after um, cause I'm, I'm, like I say, I'm in recovery as well, you know, and being able to help somebody because someone was um, there for me when I first got clean and it laid on my heart and just would just would lay there and so I just um, went I just went for it and I stay doing it right here today. Coley, tell us the story of me and you getting in contact. Yeah, so um, I was uh, you know a fan of you guys basically back in the day. Um, I've been there for years, I guess, for many years. Uh, I know I watched a lot of your videos and. Um, you know, I was here and where I am here today, um, and I was talking to my buddy Lenny, and I said, you know, it'd be funny to get you on uh, the, the after prison show. And uh, I was just joking with Lenny. And then um, come to find out, I'm watching one of your videos, and I left a comment underneath one of your videos saying, hey, Joe, why don't you, uh, why don't you check out my buddy Lenny? I said, uh, I think it'd be great. He just, got, he just did about 43 years in prison. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in like a halfway house. Uh, his brother owns the halfway house, and uh, Lenny just came through here, um, and it happens to be like right across the street from where he grew up. Um, so when I left that message, it was just a simple message to you. Hey, Joe, uh, I'm in a halfway house. Um, Lenny came through here. He's dead about 43 years in prison. I think he'd be great for your show. And you say, hey, email me. And so I emailed you and, uh, and, and a little brief story, and then you called me up, and we talked about an hour on the phone. And... Uh, you know, the rest is history, I guess, from there, so. And here we are, we're in Baltimore. In Baltimore, yes. Sir, introduce yourself to us and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, sir, good evening, good evening, good evening. My name is Jerome, and uh, by identifying myself like that, be like a host of other men and women have suffered the throes of drug addiction, mental health issues, and those particular maladies that would that would definitely have you thinking a little bit crazy about yourself but again you know I'm truly appreciative of where I find myself today you know I'm in a program called the house of change behavioral health you know program referencing to those issues that deal with men and women who are suffering through the throes of addiction and how long have you been in this program I've been in this program for the last 15 16 months and a half sir you know, and in the process of the 16 months of being in this process, man, I can only speak for myself. It's been absolutely fantastic for me, you know. However, one would like <clears throat> to identify that or accept it when I say fantastic, truly it has been for me because my history has been one, man, that hasn't been real pleasant. All right, we are just leaving from meeting with Coley, and we met Jerome. We also met another guy by the name of Jerome who uh, is like a house manager in there, and just really interesting getting the perspective of what's going on up here in Baltimore. Coley was a really nice guy. We put him on camera. He was talking pretty fast so hopefully we're gonna be able to do something really good with his part because he's got a crazy story he probably just wanted to share all of his story like immediately Joel, what'd you think of the filming 
I thought it went really well. Um, a lot of good information that I got out of it, especially because I'm an addict in recovery myself. So hearing a lot of people talk about it kind of brings me back to that. And I remember where I came from, you know? And yeah, overall it was just really good so far. Looking forward to the rest of it. Man, I don't know if you guys could see it in the background and forgive me, uh, Joel, but in the background, man, these, just these houses, they were all boarded up. Like, look at this, all boarded up. Man, it's crazy what's going on with these houses here we go more all boarded up so yeah that's really awesome Joel that you know this is helpful for you too all boarded up Damn. I mean everything is just boarded up around here but these guys were very nice uh, a little apprehensive at first when we got here. They didn't really know who we were, minus the guy Coley. And, you know, once we got a chance to begin talking and hearing Jerome, the guy that runs the house and who is Lenny's brother, once we got a chance to hear him sharing about the fact that he's got 10 of these sober living houses called the House of Change. Isn't that what it was called? Yeah. Called the House of Change. He's got 10 houses. He's charging these guys $3 a day to stay in these houses but i don't want to put too much out there this is just the vlog you'll be seeing little snippets of this throughout this a little bit of hype for what's to come there's multiple videos that we're trying to get filmed here neither here nor there we're on our way right now to go meet with lenny and we can't get in contact with lenny coley says that he played a joke on Lenny this morning telling him that we weren't coming because it was Valentine's weekend. This is a dude who's done 43 years in prison like, I don't know if I'd be joking with him like that, but neither here nor there. I tried to call him, he didn't answer, so we are going to just go show up at his apartment and hopefully we're gonna find him, we're gonna get a chance to meet with him and we're gonna get a chance to film with him. That's the hope and we're heading over there right now. Dang. Here's our next flip house. Shit, you might as well. Like all them down joints are just crazy. Yeah, they're like broken through all of them. Looks like the Bronx back in the 60s or some shit. Those are just burned down. Like, people are probably just burning their houses down. And then you got like this brand new shit right here on the corner. This shit don't even make no damn sense. Right? Did you just see that? It should say no shoot zone. We're definitely in the hood. Yeah, yeah. Damn. You got a green light. Project building. That's where we're going to. Is one of them. That's it, yep, actually. That's it. Oh, this place is gonna be. Shit. That's where Lenny lives at. Yeah. Probably really bad in that too. Probably people smoking crack in the in the staircase and shit. <laughs> All right, so we just pulled up to Lenny's building. We're gonna try to walk up here and see if we can even get in here. I don't really want to be filming a whole lot. But anyways, Joel, what are your thoughts? Are we in the projects? Yo, we is definitely in the jacks. We got one we got one elevator to work from this building. We're going to the 12th floor. Alright, let's go see if we can meet Lenny. Alright, so we are leaving from Lenny's building right now, which is an absolute construction site all the way up there 12 stories that's where we were just at and we can't make contact with lenny so now coley is trying to find out if he can make contact and i think uh maybe we should just go get some food or something until yeah. we can figure something else out because we haven't eaten at all today so let's go see what baltimore's got to eat all right, well, it is 3.30 in the afternoon and we have still not made contact 
with Lenny. Um, not sure if we got some miscommunication or some misinformation. Not really sure what's going on, but have been in contact with Coley. Coley's trying to get in contact with Lenny, and hopefully we're going to be able to do that. Maybe something came up, and no big deal if that's the case. Um, and if that is the case, you know, we're here. We're here for 24 hours, so we will make the time to make sure that we're able to do what we can do with Lenny filming with him. But man, it's just crazy. Everything was a go yesterday. I just talked with the guy Lenny yesterday. He was super excited that we were coming up here. And now we can't get in contact with him. But hopefully we're gonna be able to do that. So we've just come to a different part of town. Look at all that. There's the Valentine's Day stuff going on. So I think we're getting a little bit closer to the heart of Baltimore right now. And in fact, I think I'm looking at, a, that's Baltimore Ravens Stadium straight in front of us. So. We're going toward the hotel right now because there's really not a whole hell of a lot that we can do. Damn, that's Baltimore Ravens Stadium way up there. Y'all can't, can you see it straight ahead of us? Baltimore, hey. We're gonna go try to check into the hotel room, maybe get some food, regroup a little bit, and see if we can figure out where's Lenny. That's what the title of this video should be, Where's Lenny? Okay, now we're in another elevator at the hotel and we're going to the 14th floor. Joel, what do you think about this whole situation that we can't get in contact with this guy? I don't know what to think. I'm just hoping for the best. <laughs> well, one thing about it, regardless, it's an adventure. Welcome to the Four Seasons. Bang. Yeah, I get, well, I don't know if we're gonna bring all that in, but. All right, we got the little coffee machine. We got the little fancy light, the heater, 14 stories up. Damn, we up here. Cool. Oh yeah. Nice little room. All right, so we're gonna regroup a little bit and figure out what the hell the deal is. Fancy ass light that's. Barely working. Okay. Yeah, strobe lighting, nice. Yeah. All right, like I said, we'll regroup and figure out what the hell we're gonna do, and hopefully we're gonna be able to find this guy. I feel like we're bounty hunters right now. It's kind of exciting. So filming on my phone, because I don't want to carry a whole bunch of stuff around. We are on the third floor. Don't forget that, Joel. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we made it to our hotel. We showed you guys that. Well, now we're down by the water, and we's about to go get some food. Joel was talking about going to Hooters, but I can't do that. So there's a Hard Rock Cafe down here. There's some other stuff. I just want to see the water. I want to experience this place. We're only here for 24 hours. Uh, we got no idea what their um, what their situation is like. Where are they? Where the hell are we? Where do you want to go for? Hard Rock? Yeah, wherever the water was. So anyways, we also just talked with Lenny. Lenny told us his building's on quarantine, which we were all just up inside of that building. So we're gonna pick up Lenny. We're gonna bring him back to the hotel with us, which is the best case scenario, considering the fact that his building is super sketch as it is. Ain't no parking. And well, that's what it is. So we are gonna get a chance to talk with Lenny, shoot some videos with him. Even though this has been kind of chaotic so far, wouldn't expect anything less, and we here. Well, after everything that has been today, we finally made it to the water district down here in Baltimore. Whoo, it is cold. Damn, it's cold. Oh, shoot. They got a submarine way. Can y'all see that? I can't zoom in. The submarine way over there. Pretty cool. And we're just looking for some food. Ready to go fishing. Somewhere to eat. Damn, that is a monster ship right there. That thing is super huge. All right. So, uh, what is near us? What's around here? Everything looks really closed. 5.13 in the evening time. 
and we just got done eating at Uno's Pizzeria. We were gonna go to the Hard Rock, but that was just a little too far in terms of the walking. It's bone cold up here, and we're on our way to go get with Lenny. We have talked with Lenny. We are getting with him. So we're gonna go pick him up. We're taking him back to our hotel room because we can't film at his apartment. So we're gonna film with him at the hotel, and man, it's gonna be an awesome thing because that's what we came up here for. So we're gonna try to get you know, quite a bit of filming done. My thought is we might be able to get, you know, two, maybe even three videos filmed with this guy. I don't really want to overdo it with him, but at the same time, we are on borrowed time and it is already almost dark outside. So let's go get Lenny and let's make it happen. I cannot wait to meet this guy and I cannot wait to introduce all of you to this man as well. How y'all doing? My name's Lenny. Uh, they call me Lenny. Uh, I'm just being released from prison after serving 43 years, nine months. Uh, I first went to prison in March 21st, of uh, a day that I will never forget, March 21st, 1979. Uh, I was just turning 19. Just turning 19. This is going to be kind of, this trip here is going to be a little emotional for me, you know, so, uh, and as I think back to that day, March 21st, 79, water started, you know, forming the miles already, man, and we haven't even got into it, you know, about my flight, you know, so uh, it's gonna be a little bit emotional for me. I became addicted to drugs, to hard drug, cocaine, you know, when I was at an early age, you know, at age 13, you know, so in order for me to support my habit, my drug addiction, I started committing armed robberies, you know. And then that went on, you know, until I turned 19, you know, because my drug addiction was kept climbing and climbing. You know, so uh, going back and thinking about that, you know, it's kind of painful, man. But it was a journey that it was, I guess was cut out for me, you know, to get to where I am today. So, but I just can't forget about, you know, how it all began for me with my drug addiction, where it led me, you know, so. And that's where my life of drugs began and my life of crime began there in order to support my addiction. All right, I'm on the power shot right now and check out the hotel room. We had to flip the mattress up to make sure that we had a filming location and bang. This was how we was doing it right here. We got the mic stands right there. Joel in the back. And Mr. Lenny, sir. Lenny did awesome on camera. Lenny, how was the filming? At first I was a little nervous, right? But as uh, you made it a little bit easier for me. You made it a little bit easier for me with your questioning. And I feel real comfortable. I'm glad to hear that. You know, like I say, I've watched a couple of you uh before yesterday and uh but you were a little bit hurt and angry about it, that that particular situation <laughs> so anyways <laughs> the only videos that lenny's seen <laughs> is the danny wow e explanation <laughs> so here i am trying to tell lenny hey look it's <laughs> <laughs> but lenny's very understanding about everything and man what a just a crazy situation considering the fact that danny also served 40 years in prison but we're getting ready to take Lenny home. There's going to be a lot more coming with Lenny tomorrow. And, sir, just a real pleasure to get a chance to meet you Thanks. and to start hearing your story. Thank you. All right, let's go. You got the key? Yeah, yeah. Word. All right, it is 8 o'clock. And what a productive day of filming up here in Baltimore. True that. Very eventful. <laughs> We've met Lenny, we've met Coley, we've met Jerome, we've met the other Jerome. We've gone down one-way streets the wrong way. <laughs> we've frozen our asses off up here, but it's been good though. And you know, real quick, uh, one thing that I want to, look, look at, oh, I thought she was nodding out right there. She's waiting on the bus, like no bullshit. I thought she was nodding out. She might actually be nodding out actually. It's not looking good. Um, 
I want to say this. When we left this morning to come up here, I made a comment that I regretted later on in the day prior to us even getting up here. I referred to Baltimore as Baghdad Baltimore. Yeah, she's definitely falling over. Kind of. Uh, are we falling over on the bench? What's crazy is that bench right there says Baltimore, the greatest city in America. Yeah, she's nodding out. So anyways, I made a comment this morning. I referred to Baltimore as Baghdad, Baltimore. I regretted that. And, you know, we get up here, and that's exactly what this place is. This place is rough. This place is gritty. This place is run down, and it's sad. It's sad to see the amount of poverty that is this city. This is a... I mean, it's a big-ass city, but I guess you're probably going to have that type of shit in most all of your big cities you're gonna have this type of stuff and i guess what i'm sharing with you guys is i ain't really got a lot of experience in the big cities new york that's joelle's stomping grounds like i ain't, I ain't got no experience so joelle you got experience in these type of cities like what is your thoughts on baltimore baltimore is definitely different from new york um i was saying how the the way things look here is a lot different, you know, like it's a lot more our, run down, things are broken. That was our parking right there. So bust the... Uh, Wait, was there right? No, that was the mistake we made last time. Yeah, so we just gotta go around the block one time. All right, but, so... You, but yeah, basically uh, we were driving and like one after another, you'd see one house and then another house that all the windows are broken, everything's boarded, like houses look like they're set on fire. I was saying it looked like the Bronx from like back in like the, the 60s, you know what I mean? Where buildings were just on fire, like it looks pretty bad, you know? And with COVID and stuff going around, there's not a lot of people on the streets and the people that are on the streets are, you know, people that are living on the streets pretty much. You people know? who have to be on the streets. Yeah. Even though we're only here for you know 12 more hours it's my hope to come back up here work with lenny as much as possible once you guys get a chance to hear lenny's story and hear this man talk you're gonna be like holy cow like this guy is unfortunately very very fragile i hate to use that word but that's the so we gotta go up here and then we bust another yeah yeah that's gonna be right there he's a fragile dude he's done a lot of time he's emotionally uh damaged and who knows, maybe something good could come of this situation. I can't guarantee that, you know, we're gonna be able to save any lives here, but who knows, maybe Lenny's story alone could save somebody else's life. So that's the positive thing that we're hoping for. Tomorrow when we get up with Lenny, our, our hope is to be able to get our hands on the books that he wrote, to be able to share, show you guys where to go find these books. I don't know how we're gonna do that, but we're gonna try to do that. And just spend a little bit more time with him hearing his story the man's got some crazy stuff he was in a movie in prison i'll leave you with that cliffhanger as we get ready to wrap this up we got to go fight for parking and we'll pick this up again tomorrow